Hey guys, it's Bub here. A few months ago we took a look at Nano 11 24H2. However, recently the developers have released new versions of Nano 11. Now we're taking a look today at Nano 11 24H2 version 2. And to spice things up a little bit, we're taking a look at the LTSC version. I'm going to go off on a limb here and say that this is running Windows 11 24H2 LTSC, which will get that longer support, assuming Windows updates are still enabled for this OS. So I'm eager to take a look and see what this OS is like, what are the improvements over Nano 11 24H2 v1, and things of that nature. So here we are, we're brought into the standard new Windows 11 setup that comes with 24H2. We're going to continue through install. I don't have a product key. Um, it should be bringing us to the EULA. Yep, here we are. Uh, we're going to accept these terms and then let us select the disk to install Windows on. I'm taking a look at this again because Nano 11, if I recall correctly, was actually a pretty good competitor to Tiny 11, which is my favorite uh, OS by far. Um, so I wanted to see kind of what this new version brought and if it made any you know, monumental changes to Nano 11. So we're now installing. Let's boot into the desktop once this installs and we'll see what it's like. All right, and here we are. The one thing I really like about Tiny 11 and Nano 11 is that they both actually give you the out-of-box experience. They don't just immediately jump you into a pre-configured, pre-made add-in account with who knows what other kind of bloatware. Um, I really like the fact that this just works. Um, it lets you into the out-of-box experience. You can customize some things, like we'll name this account Windows, and we'll skip that and continue on. I like that it, despite the fact that I don't have internet, it just let me go in and create a local account, which I believe would have done the same thing even if I had internet because that's how these OS's are typically programmed. So once we get into the desktop, I'm going to go ahead and install VMware Tools off camera and then we'll take a look at Nano 11 24H2 V2 LTSC. That is most definitely a mouthful. Alright, and here we are on the desktop. The only thing I've went ahead and done was install VMware Tools. I have not done anything else. So on the desktop, we have two icons. We have our recycle bin and a post setup config that comes with .git, .github. Uh, the Copilot Edition Switcher to, I guess, install Edge and Copilot or remove Edge and Copilot. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't come with either of those by default. Um, we have Install Software, which these are all actually batch scripts, um, which I believe they should be when get commands. Uh, let's see if I can edit these. Yep, they are when get commands. Uh, pretty cool. It's a nice, easy way to install applications without actually having to have the EXEs come with the OS. Uh, here we have OS tweaks, like compress the OS, which you should probably do if you really want a smaller disk size. We're not going to worry about that right this moment. We then have settings, home page, store, you know, all sorts of other fun stuff that you could look at to tweak and customize in Nano 11. Then have a folder called useful stuff, which none of this is really useful. It's just extras, Discord, GitHub, and YouTube. Um, not useful. We have a registry key that does OEM information for NanoWin. We're not going to run that. And then we have disable updates until 3000. Um, so I'm going to assume that updates are enabled by default. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to assume because that's there that they are. Uh, let's move down to the taskbar where we see that we have widgets disabled and I don't think I can re-enable them. Yeah, they're just completely gone. Widgets and the other teams is gone. Um, over on the right side of the taskbar, we have our traditional show desktop button. We have our notifications pane, our little action center here, and our system tray. Nothing abnormal there. By default, there's really nothing pinned on the taskbar. We have our task view that does work. File Explorer and Edge obviously aren't here. The Edge is not installed. File Explorer just isn't pinned. We then have a full search bar that does appear to work. And then we have the start menu, which is very bare. It has the getting started, settings, and file explorer. Going over to all, we can see we have very little things installed, including accessibility, the calculator, file explorer, get started, notepad, paint, settings, snipping tool, backup, security tools. That's it. That's all we get on this operating system. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Let's go ahead into settings and take a look at some things. If we go down to about, we can see that this is Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTSC. So it is a special build of this OS, 24H2, specific build 26100.3478. We should be able to see the same information by going into Winver. Of course, if I could spell it right, uh, we can see that, wow, I really cannot spell tonight. Uh, we run Winver. It actually has a custom logo, Nano 11 LTSC. 
I really do like that custom branding that they put in. I like that font. I like that logo. It looks very nice. Something I think Microsoft should definitely consider taking a look at in their builds of Windows 11. I do see Windows Update is here, um, but they are okay. They're already automatically paused until December 31st in the year 3000. If this OS even lasts that long, I'll be incredibly surprised. But yeah, it does look like that registry key was already enabled by default. Next, let's go into our task manager and see what kind of system processes we're using um, as it claims to be a lightweight, small Windows operating system. So how much of this system are we really using? Task manager took forever to open. Uh, CPU usage, you know, we're doing typical Windows CPU utilization, nothing good, nothing bad. And then memory, we only have two gigs on this VM because I didn't want to modify it from the default. Um, and out of that two gigs, we're using 1.5 gigs while pretty much idle. So not exactly great. But I mean, not, not exactly terrible for Windows 11. Doesn't leave you much room to have Chrome tabs open if you're doing that. And lastly, let's go ahead into our file explorer, which is now in there. And we can see, now Green, remember we do have that compress, oh, let's see, it's under OS tweaks. We do have this OS compression script that we're not gonna run for the sake of time. But in our local disk, we are using 8.57 gigabytes, meaning we have 50.6 gigs free of our 59.2 gig disk. Uh, the ISO itself is 4.3 gigabytes, which compared to Tiny11, that is pretty big, but this does offer a little more functionality than Tiny11 does. So that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any other video ideas or any other operating systems you want me to take a look at as I try to look at as many viewer-recommended OSs as possible. That being said, I'll see you all in the next one.